This is a video of my successful uh, motor replacement on my Black & Decker 20 volt matrix max. Uh, of course, you wouldn't be seeing this video if it wasn't a success. So uh, basically I uh, pulled the, the motor out of it, got a new motor, put it in and it works. So now we'll move on to the video where you actually see the nuts and bolts of taking the uh, drill apart and uh, I'm putting the new motor in. Thank you very much. Okay, this is my uh, Black & Decker 20 volt max matrix. Uh, the thing that makes it a matrix is that it's got this um, interchangeable heads. So this is set up for an impact. You can slide this off and you can put on a drill head or there's various other attachments you can use. Anyway, what happened today was uh, while I was using this in the impact mode, um, a spark came out of here and I saw, saw it and then I felt it was it hit my hand. It was a big spark and then the um, the uh, drill quit working. So I'm pretty sure that uh, this thing is uh, my first 20 volt that I bought. I kind of standardized on uh, the Black & Decker. I've got some other 20 volt stuff and uh, pretty sure the motor's bad. <clears throat> this is probably a brush that uh, blew out of it. So anyway, let's get the uh, head off of there and then uh, the thing I want to do battery off. The uh, thing I want to do is I want to get the motor out so I can see if I can find a replacement motor. It looks like there's replacement motors uh, online everywhere uh, for this. The trick is that you can't get the one with the right uh, gear on the end of it. It's a, um, oh, what is that? One, two, three. It's got five teeth and you can't find a five teeth uh, thing and it's related to the mesh with this. So that's where the five teeth comes in. It's a special intercha interchangeable thing. It's not permanently connected in the drive. So you have, have uh, it's got to easily engage. Let's put it that way. So anyway, um, there's another good video out there on this uh, swapping or trying to change the, the motor. A couple problems with it. Um, you need a, what his doesn't have is you got to cut this uh, label in here because that goes across the seam when you separate this thing. Uh, the screws are the same, and let's see, the other thing is uh, he doesn't have the magnet up here. And there's my magnet. I've already had this apart, so it should go pretty good this time, but this fell out and I didn't know where it went. So if you have one of these that falls out, at least you'll know where it goes when we're done. So <clears throat> let's count the screws as we take them out. As we're taking them out, we'll count them after we get them out. Whoa, that one's in there a little deep. Not going to get that with my Black & Decker. Okay, so let's see if we got them all out. There's one here. All right, so, oop, already scooped up by the magnet. So we got uh, eight screws. They're all the same screws, and this will come right apart. And I've already had it apart, but it does come apart that easy. Um, and in that other video, uh, he started pulling everything out of this, and that's not necessary. Uh, this magnet is uh, going to go back up wherever the hell it was. Heck, wherever the heck it was, it was right here. So it got stuck. So that's got to go back in there. Anyway, all we need to do is get the motor out of here and disconnect the uh, connectors. Uh, disconnecting the connectors, uh, we can do that with the, just a couple of, uh, just a screwdriver. And you can uh, disconnect those after you take the motor out. The motor uh, comes out pretty easy. This is part of the um, system for uh, interchanging the heads. There's the motor comes out, you can pop the, uh, spades off of there. So there's the uh, end of it. Um, this is the red wire. It's identified with a red paint dot. So you want to make sure that you put the red to the uh, positive. Then there's uh, two screws in here that take this head off. Can't get to it. Nope. Well, maybe I did. We'll see. Oops, my magnet already came off. It's got stuck to the motor. Come on off there. So two screws taking this plastic thing off. Come on. The screwdriver's a little big for uh, 
these slots. And like I said, I wanted to get this thing out of here. So, so there it is. There's the two screws attracted to the magnet. And these two pieces here are part of that whole system. So here's the motor. And you can see it's got this uh, gear on here. And it's a five-tooth gear. It's tapered, and it's got some nice guides on here for uh, guiding it into the interface with this thing. That's part of why it can go on so easily. Problem is, you can't find a motor. And uh, there is some numbers on the motor on this one. Uh, no Black & Decker stuff. Maybe there's a Black & Decker number. Uh, it's RS550VC, and then there's a dash 7527, made in China. Eight. Um, and there's the motor. Now, in the other video I saw, they took this off with a heat gun, heated it up with a heat gun, and then they pried on it. Now, of course, I'm replacing this motor, so I don't really care about damaging the motor, but it doesn't look like it really wants to come off of there. And it's probably in there about halfway inside this. So I'm going to put this in the vise. Of course, we don't need to save this. We just need this uh, gear off of here. So I'm going to put it in the vise, and I'm going to heat it up with a propane torch. And give that a shot, and we'll see what happens. I moved over to the vise. I clamped this up. It looks like I've distorted it a little bit to uh, get that um, tightened down so I can uh, pry on this thing. As a matter of fact, let me get one other tool. Got a couple other tools that might be helpful for uh, prying on this. Uh, this one here actually looks like it'll be pretty good. Uh, in the video, I saw they tried using a wrench. Uh, it's pretty thin to try and get a wrench in there. So let's get this thing fired up and we'll see what happens. Oops. Maybe break that. Let's throw the screwdriver. There she comes. Whoa! Come back here. On the floor. It's kind of hot, so I threw it on the floor. So the plan is to uh, press this gear onto the uh, new motor. And like I said, I wanted to. It's not too hot. I wanted to get some measurements off of this, especially the uh, measurement on the shaft, so that uh, I can match that up to some measurements and make sure I'm getting the right. I'm the right motor. Uh, switch to metric. It says uh, 3.06. I think the ones I've seen online are, I thought they were saying 3.2. So, oops, I'm off a little bit here. Let's re zero. These are not calibrated, uh, but they do have my name on it, so that's pretty cool. 3.1. Three point one two, three point one, and uh, I want to get some other dimensions, and I'll probably summarize this in the uh, in the comments. The new motor arrived. Didn't take very long. I think it's three or four days. So let's see what we ended up with. Let me see that up. Well, it looks pretty close. Got our red mark. Looks like these uh, connectors are a little bit smaller than the uh, the other ones. I think they're still going to work. You can see that the gear is uh, pressed away on there. And that we're going to have to try and get off of there. Yeah, it's not going to slide off there. All right, so 
for this one, I think I'm going to try and do the same thing and put a little heat on it, clamp it a little gentler in the vise. Okay, got in the vise, a little heat. on there. Ooh, got a nice start. So I think I'm going to try, try it first. I want to bend those electrical connectors. I'll try it this way first and see what happens. pretty close. Still got my end play. Hopefully I didn't damage anything inside here. All right, next we'll move on to the assembly. All right, so if all goes well, we should be able to start to reassemble this. So let's see if these uh, screws line up. Nope, didn't find the hole that time. Oh, found that hole. Okay, I got those two <clears throat> screws in. Snug them up a little bit. And <clears throat> one of the purposes for this is uh, these two big tabs, they actually lock into the housing and keep the motor from spinning. So I'm gonna put these two pieces on next after I uh, plug, it, plug it in. So Red to red, black to black, well, black to nothing. It was on pretty hard. There we go, it was snapped on. In that big hole there. So I'm going to go ahead and take a chance and uh, finish putting this together. And if nothing else popped out, any springs or anything, this should just go right on here with a little wiggle. And we gotta make sure this button is in. As you can see, it's trying to pop out of there. Oops, almost forgot my magnet too. <clears throat> that would have been fun.
there all together. Doesn't want to do that yet. I was going to try it without uh, putting the screws in, but it opens up just a little bit that the battery won't lock in. So it's not that big a deal to put the screws in. See if the battery fits in. Snaps in. Oh, the trigger doesn't work. Let's see if this is uh let's see if this interlock works. That's not working. There we go. <laughs> so I didn't know that, but uh, apparently, oops, when you take this out, <laughs> the trigger doesn't work. So you have to have one of your uh, um, attachments in. So, see that should be forward. Yep, that should be reverse. Yep. Speed sounds good. So, I think we can call that a success. So yes, it was a success. And uh, there it is. Thanks for watching. Well, I've got the uh, motor, new motor ordered. So while we're waiting for that, I thought I'd uh, see how hard it would be to take this thing apart. Yeah, this is the brush end, I think. So this is, um, there's several crimps around the edge. <clears throat> and there it is. And my suspicions were true. It looks like, uh, this one here, the brush is okay. And this one here, it is not. Looks like it went through the brush and then started to go through the, uh, the actual lever itself.